Well, okay, I'm back. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos, but this is a, um, I don't know even what this is. It's Fax Texturing Tutorials, episode five, I guess this is. I haven't done this in ages. Sorry if I sound stupid. Uh, it's been ages. Anyway, today, I think, we're gonna do this. This is a GUI from Thorncraft. I'm gonna do GUIs today, as you probably could tell. Um, yeah, it's it's a pretty complicated looking one, but I'm going to try and do it in the simplest way possible. Alright, so we're back. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is these set of slots here. This seems to be the easiest thing to do. And uh, before we tackle this, you might as well get to the easy bits. Uh, I'm going to have a thing on my screen here where you can uh, access uh, this file that I'm just going to open. Uh, it's just a couple of bits and bobs, and I think it's in here. Two seconds. Should have this all prepared, but apparently not. Right. So I'm going to put this bit on its own. Um, probably a link here-ish. Uh, but yes. So we're going to drag this into this GUI. And before we do that, sorry, I forgot about this. You have to go image size and scale that up to 1024. There we go. Now it's proper sized. And drag that in. And we don't need this anymore, so we can close that. Then, so you place it approximately where it should be. And then a cool trick, you get the opacity here, scale it down, I think I've probably shown you this. And you can just position it right over the top of that GUI, right there. Okay? So, super easy. And then you can set the opacity right up again. And then, as you can see, that is now in place. Right. Now we're going to move on to this. Uh, you can leave the um, default GUI in the background, it helps. Um, I guess. Anyway. So this is an approximate square. I know this is going to be the simple version first, and we're not going to have this nice detail and everything. So this is a classical of most GUIs, so we're just going to do a simple, simple square. Um, I'm going to provide these um, bits uh, yeah, as a link as well. Uh, these are basically bits that I cut out and some little bits here. They're not finished, I'm probably going to have to do a couple more. Um, well, that's not too hard, you just cut the ends off for whichever sides you need. Um, so I'm just going to cut some of this. You could do it by hand, uh, like um, Handfox, I think he does it. Um, where he uh, draws the vector uh, and then adds the shadow, but this is easier because it's the same. So I'm going to control V that in and place that approximately where the top of that is. And then we're going to go copy paste. And I'm just using keyboard shortcuts because it's so much easier. Then zoom out and zoom over here and grab that. Grab that, put that right about there. You probably should have them overlapping. I think it's just a bit easier to put the corners on. Just like that. And then, bring it slightly further down. We'll merge those together. And then we'll copy paste that. And why is that done that? Two seconds. duplicate since it's not being friendly and then we'll drag that over to there right now as you can see we have some borders you can probably um, quite happily merge all of those down now so they're all one layer oops sorry about that then we just select that up to there zoom right in and get that up there delete that so there we go, that's pretty much that done. Well, Photoshop crashed, blue screen of death. Well done, Photoshop, you deserve a cookie for that. And it's actually the next day now, because of how many times it broke. Cam Studio broke, Photoshop broke again. Uh, this is probably the eighth or ninth time I've tried to record this. So, oof, I don't know how many times. Anyway, uh, I added these corners 
Um, couldn't film it unfortunately, but uh, it's not too hard. You just paste them over the top and stick, merge them down. And anyway, we're going to do the background now, so I'm just going to open the background, which will be provided in the zip file as usual. And now we can delete that. I've just dragged it in. Put it behind. Put it behind the frame, and drag it into position. Then we're going to use the select tool. And we're going to control X and control V to get it out to create a um, a new layer with this background on it. As you can see, that's a reasonably looking background now. We're going to do the slots now after the back since we've done the background now. You need to do a rounded off rectangle like so. You need to do it slightly as if you've cut the corners off a rectangle. And it doesn't even need to be a perfect rectangle, it can be slightly off like this. Obviously you're putting you'll be putting a lot more effort into it than me, so it'll make it look a lot nicer. Anyway, there's a background. The cloth I mean. Now we need to get the colour of the cloth, which I'll provide here, which you can type into this box here and it will come up in this little box here. And then you can use the fill to change to change the color. Um, now we've done that, we need to add the effects. So we need to go to blending options. We add a stroke. Uh, again, I'll have this this color here provided up on the screen that you can type in. Uh, and you all we need to do is just click the button there to uh, set the color. So we're going to set that as a stroke. And now we need to also add a drop shadow, which needs to be a, a dark back black overlay. And I have uh, I've already got this set up. Um, I'm pretty sure that's already set up. Yep. Um, I'll uh, put all these details again in the box in the corner. Make it default. Right. So that's the basis of the cl the cloth bit of the GUI. All right. Now we've got the cloth bit of the GUI finished. Uh, or at least we've got the background of the cloth finished. Now we need to add these um, rivets here. Uh, at the the equivalent of those rivets. So I'm going to break the number one rule of SPACs in Minecraft. I'm going to create a circle. I have no idea why they're circles, but me, yeah, they're circles. So all we need to do is take a, a color picker of that, and then we set the uh, rivet that we've just created to that color. Now all we need to do from now is create an inner glow, which we're going to set to uh, the center this time instead of the edge so it's coming from the middle of the circle I'm going to create it a uh, sort of a, a a center bit I guess I'm, I'm not quite sure what to call it uh, and a soft light and we need to make it white on full opacity like that so now we've created the rivet there we need to drag it over here onto the cloth bit that we've just created and get rid of that properties bit annoying and uh, now we need to duplicate it a few times so bring that there and we need to duplicate it again bring that down there and just drag that over a bit and now all we need to do for the <coughs> for this um, slot is create a pentagonal slot no, and I actually need to change this to five get rid of get rid of that I'll move it in a minute it's not behaving so there you go, one pentagon, and I'll provide all of the colours for these bits in the corner. Let's delete that pentagon, um, octagon I mean. Right there we go, so there's one slot finished. Uh, I'd advise sticking it all in one group so it's easier to manage. So if we stick it in the group there and we duplicate it, <coughs> and we'll just drag it down there. I would suggest that you redraw out of these um, boxes every time just to make it feel a bit more natural instead of copying it but I'm going to try and do it quick just to demonstrate actually I'm just going to rotate it there to give the illusion of I'm actually trying to do it and well, there you go so if I put the background back on again here are two very nice looking slots and in the next segment I'm going to uh, create the bar and the relief of the bar over here alright so now we're going to create the bar I've already opened the file that we need um, I've already created this uh, bar here uh, for another GUI that we needed, another GUI. See, this is for the alchemical furnace, alchemy furnace, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, 
So I'm going to copy this. I'll explain how I've put it together so that you can replicate it, but I can't be bothered drawing it again, so I'm just going to copy it. And also to make it a bit um, uh, uniform. So I'll drag that over the top of there. And you can create these bars however you like. Uh, I'd advise for Thorncraft though that you create them very similar to this because this is the theme, I guess, of this. Anyway, I'll show you how it works. I'll turn off all of the effects. So, at the base of it, it's just a, an orange, sort of rounded off rectangular thing with octagonal ends, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what shape it is, but it looks like that. And then there's a dark relief to give the illusion of the the, bot the dark side of the bottle kind of thing that it's in. And there's also a light bit as well to, for the, the light shadow. Uh, and then obviously there's a, a dark and light highlight to go in the corners. So, yes, it's orange gloop, or whatever it is. Anyway, that's that uh, bit of the GUI done, you don't need to do anything else to it. But the more complicated bit is to do the relief. And there's a really easy way to do it, which means that you don't have to redraw it. You just duplicate the orange gloop, position it right over where it should be, and uh, centre it a bit better. Um, I already know where the centre is because I've done this a few times. And there we go. There's the uh, orange gloop in place. And uh, since it's a relief and it's not a the actual bar, I'm going to get rid of all of the effects and get rid of the um, layer style. So we're just left with an orange shape. And set it to a pretty dark looking grey. Uh, any, I think it's anything under that grey there will work. Anything that's less than halfway um, grey. I'm not sure how to explain that, but yeah, not sure. So as you can see, it's created like a, a relief or, or shadow where it should be. Um, but it's not quite finished yet because it doesn't look very 3D. So we're going to add an outer glow to make it look kind of inset. And then a... Uh, a drop shadow. Uh, it's a white overlay uh, with quite low opacity to make it just have a bit of a shadow on it. We're also going to add an inner glow to complement the outer glow. It's also going to be slightly darker to make it drop into. And then we're also going to create a dark um, inner shadow which makes it look uh, like the outer shadow but the opposite on the inside. And I actually might want to make the outer glow the nope, nope, wrong one. The inner glow first an overlay and slightly less opaque. There you go. And now it looks like a sort of inset into the in into the GUI. See? It's perfect, isn't it? Looks really nice. Uh that concludes the tutorial on how to draw the GUIs. It's pretty uh, pretty similar, pretty similar. If I can say my words correctly to most other GUIs, um, and yeah, so goodbye.